Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're looking for a dual motor off-road scooter, this might be a good option for you. I've had a lot of fun on this over the last couple days. It's called the W6 from Wide Whale. Now, these guys have been around since 2018. They have four other models to choose from. This is one of their beefier models. Uh, in fact, actually, all of their four models they have are dual motor scooters. Now, this one falls in the $1,000 to $2,000 price range. There's nine other brands I've reviewed in this category, so it is a pretty competitive area for dual motor off-road scooters. The W6 costs $1,466, so let's see how it compares with the other brands, starting off with a speed test. The W6 has two 1,000 watt motors, one in each wheel, and that is one of the more powerful scooters in this class. Now that is powered with a 52 volt, 23.4 amp hour lithium battery, which is the second largest as far as volts and amp hours. There are two charging ports, but they only give you one charger. So with two chargers, it takes five hours. With one, it takes 10 hours, which is one of the longer charge times I've seen for a scooter. The W6 is rated up to 40 miles per hour. In the settings, you can actually go in and change the power output down to 5%. I don't know why you'd wanna do that, but you do have that option. So let me show you how fast this can go, starting off with speed mode one. Okay, for the speed test, I'm gonna show you different speeds that the scooter can do. Right now, I've got it on speed mode one, dual batteries, turbo turned on. I do have a full charge, speed up open. Let's start with number one. One is 13, two is 26, and three is 34. This one is with eco turned on, just on speed mode three. And we have dual motors as well, and I'm topping out at 22 miles per hour. Okay, this is single motor, speed mode one, turbo turned on. One is 12, two is 25, and three is 25. Well, I didn't hit 40 miles per hour, but I came pretty close, and I did beat the average for speed in this price range, which is about 33 miles per hour. So it is on the high end for speed. In this price range, it takes most scooters about six seconds to hit 20 miles per hour. We're gonna see how fast the W6 is. Now, I do weigh 185 pounds. The W6 weighs 79 pounds, which is the second heaviest scooter in this price range, but it has a carrying capacity of 330 pounds. Now, in the settings, you can actually go into level 05 and change this from a zero to a kickstart. So there is that option. And then in P07, you can change it from a hard to a soft start. I do have a set to the most sensitive and the most powerful settings uh, that you can do. So let's see how long it takes to hit 20 miles per hour. I wanna show you an acceleration between turbo dual motors on speed mode three and turbo single motor on speed mode three. On single motor, that's a very gentle acceleration. There's other single motor scooters that have a lot more power than this does for single. So it's got both options. You got a fast and gnarly start or a slow and steady. The acceleration is pretty awesome. Uh, on dual motor, I'm looking at the skid track here. My front wheel was spinning for probably about 25, 30 feet. It just kept on going. <laughs> now this is a, a pretty new road, so I'm not surprised by that. But yeah, it throws you back. Um, it's not the fastest acceleration on a scooter that I've seen. The Outstorm has just an insane acceleration, but this one is pretty close. And honestly, I like it better. The Outstorm was just way too fast. This is abrupt, quick, but not so much where, you know, you're gonna be thrown off the back end of the scooter. The W6 has a range rating of 35 to 40 miles. It's time to see how long it can go. Okay guys, I'm all geared up, got the full face on. I've got uh, elbow and knee pads. I'm gonna do a range test. This is gonna be all off-road riding. 
So I'm gonna let you know, you know, how long this can go for desert terrain. I've got a full battery and I'm gonna have it on speed mode three. I'm not gonna max it out. I'll probably keep around 15, 20 miles an hour, if that. The faster I go, the more wear and tear it has on my legs. It can go faster than I'm willing to ride it, but man, you gotta have some beefy legs to ride this thing consistently. And I'm gonna tell you all the things I like and don't like about the scooter while I'm on the race test. So here we go. There's certain products that I review that I look forward to getting out there and showing it off. This is one of them. This has an eye candy appeal like no other scooter I've seen. This is the second day I've been out here and the first day I just took this through some stuff that was that I thought would kind of jack the scooter up a little bit. Some hills that were way too steep for it <laughs> and some jumps and some drops and I'm kind of expecting to hear some rattling and shaking and just some problems and I haven't had any yet. It is solid and sturdy and very quiet. It's a very quiet scooter for how powerful it is and for being on this type of trail. The balance is a little bit off. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, it's a heavier scooter and so you do have to be careful with how you distribute the weights. I think they could have done a little bit better job on that. It takes a little bit more effort than I'm used to to keep this upright. The V6 has two motors and also two controllers. There's one controller per motor and they've done that to give you more control and a stable power delivery. Uh, that's one of the first things that I noticed. I was expecting it to just tear off and skid the tires for 30, 40 feet and you know, wear the tire tread down within the first couple days, but that hasn't been the case at all. It has the power when you need it, but the delivery of that power is much better than other brands. Let me dive into the nitty gritty of the V6, starting off with the handlebars. As far as the length, it is a little bit short for the power and the size of the scooter. I do feel cramped in that department. I do like the ergonomic grips. They're very nice feeling. I've got no complaints there. The brake levers feel nice and they're pretty big as well. As far as the stem height and angle, it is perfect for my frame. If it's angled too far back, it just pushes you off the deck and it's hard to manage and control and you, you lose a lot of balance, stability and handling when it's like that. And then if it's too short, I've got to lean over and that just puts some strain on my lower back and also throws off my balance and stability. So they've nailed that part as far as my frame. I've got no issues there. It is just nice and comfortable. I also like the way it collapses. It has a locking lever. As soon as you pull that out, you just push down the other lever that's right by it. Once the stem hits a certain spot, it clicks and locks it so you can then easily pick it up. I shouldn't say easily. It is quite heavy to pick up. And there's a place to grab it on the back end of the scooter. Not so much on the front ends. I've kind of had to play around with different places to pick it up. If you guys like a scooter that has a large deck, which I do, you'll also be a fan of this. I wear size 10 and a half shoes and I can fit my feet one in front of the other. And as far as width, I can fit them side by side and got enough uh, standing room there. And then on top of that, there's the fin. It's actually a very large fin. It is set up higher from the deck than I prefer. I don't know why they made it so high. When I've got one foot on the, the main deck and one foot on that, it's I feel a little lopsided, but I have been using that a lot, especially when I'm going fast. And with the stem height and how it's angled, there's a lot of space when I do put my right foot on that fin to get low. It's you. As you would have guessed, the V6 is full suspension. It's got dual hydraulic suspension. The suspension is the nicest I've ever felt for an off-road scooter. It almost feels like air suspension, to be honest. I found a rock patch to show you how the suspension handles this type of terrain. This stuff is pretty gnarly, pretty rocky. <laughs> so, and of course you're gonna wanna go, you know, pretty slow on stuff like this. Let me hop on and show you what it can do. stuff like that that's where I hold my breath hoping that I don't damage my rotor now that is bumpy but it's definitely manageable it's within the range of what the suspension can handle oh I just noticed this based on the dust you can see how far I've traveled 
for the uh, front suspension to kind of give you a comparison. That's about probably three inches, close to three inches of travel. And at that point there, that's where you bottom out. <laughs> This is just killing it. I just came up this section here. Got a nice drop to my right. Kind of hard to get some depth perception on that, but oh, this is fun. It's uh, wearing me out, but it's got the power to get up this trail. There's some steeper sections where I have to hop off and kind of walk with it. Some of this stuff is uh, way too loose and steep. But man, this is a good time. Last but not least, it has 10 inch off-road tires. I'm not sure what the width of those tires are. If I had to guess, I'd say about three inches. They are quite wide and pretty knobby as well. Most of this trail is hard packed with a couple inches of sand on it. And these tires have done a fantastic job of navigating and kind of powering through and sticking to the, the trail. Well, I'm super impressed with how well these tires are handling this trail. I'm out in this wash and there's like two, three inches of gravel and sand here. There's some really loose stuff. And I've only slipped out a couple times. For the most part, it has got some great grip and I've got really nice control, which is always good when I'm going 15 to 20 miles per hour on this. Uh, I thought I'd be slipping out a lot more. With those fat tires, you would also think that you know, handling and, and turning is a little bit shaky in that, but that hasn't been the case at all. I've had uh, great control, great handling, and after going on this trail, great grip and traction. So I'm really loving those tires. There's a couple things I've noticed that I, I don't like about the scooter. Most of it I do, but I do have to tighten up the handlebar, this piece here, the handlebars a little bit. Probably every 15, 20 minutes, kind of depends on how bumpy the terrain is. But, and I've twisted that as hard as I can get it, and it still just comes loose. And then with the uh, fin piece here, there's a big gap between the deck and that piece. Most times I, I'll put you know one foot in front of the other, uh, but sometimes that just wears my back leg out, so I like to just do a, a side-by-side -side stance like this on the deck. And when I do that, any bump, or if I hit the brakes a little bit too hard, this piece here just jabs into that bone. So if they lower that down a little bit, that would be a huge, huge help and much more comfortable. Or you can just wear high top shoes. That's what I recommend. And that's the easiest fix for something like that. Well, the range test is ended. As you can see, I am pushing the scooter. It did end sooner than I wanted it to. But my app recorded 13 miles with over a thousand feet of elevation gain. And that's awesome. I'm actually really happy with that distance with that elevation on this terrain. I'm telling you guys, I rode this thing pretty hard. I found a single track motorcycle trail. It was pretty rough and gnarly going on that. And it held up very well. The battery bar went down to one. And then within three minutes after it hit one bar, it died on me. So there's no, you know, sometimes you'll get like, the last battery bar will flash or just the outline of the bar will show up when it's about to die. Uh, the second bar lasts a long time. That's the longest bar out of all five of them. And uh, so I was pretty hopeful for that last one, but yeah, when that hit, it was pretty much game over. Wheel says the W6 can climb a hill up to a 45% grade. I've got a hill, I'm gonna show you how this scooter can climb. But at the very bottom here, it is 12.5%. And you can see this is pretty sandy and you know not the, not the hardest stuff. Uh, right in the middle, that's 34%. And then up towards the top, that's 29%. And yeah, this is actually one of the shorter hills that I've been on today. You can see my scooter's down there. I'm standing at the top now. It's about a quarter of a block long. And uh, I'll probably actually continue on up here. Looks like it flattens out a little bit, but continues to climb. So let's see how it does. Well, you probably can't tell, but I've got three battery bars left. I am in the uh, speed mode three. My speedometer is open, give you an idea of how fast I can make it of it. Gonna get a running start. Here we go. <laughs> Starting to climb here. Oh, put my foot down. 
<laughs> Front wheel is spinning pretty good. <laughs> okay, this is another pretty heinous trail. This thing is just crazy. So I'm definitely gonna be walking this on uh, sections of it, but, and this is more hard pack than the other trail or the other hill. Let me show you how it's gonna do with this thing. some rocks and stuff too that I gotta avoid. Yeah, like right there. <laughs> this is the type of terrain or type of hill. Jeez. <laughs> oh, Alright, just put one foot on the deck and one foot off and it just wants to oh, I don't wanna yeah. right there it's a little tricky. I'm more worried about damaging the rotor than anything else. That was only really hard part there. And basically to the top. <laughs> Man, climbing on this is just fun. Whew. And it also didn't bog down. Uh, the off-road scooter I just reviewed uh, from High Boy it did pretty good on uphills. But as soon as it got above like 20%, that motor made this funky noise and it actually cut power. I haven't had that with this. Uh, the motor noise, you know, just the general noise goes up a little bit as most motors do when you climb super steep stuff, especially something like that. But it's never been that kind of scary, like you're hurting me type of a noise that I have heard before. It's a pretty solid machine for climbing. Those motors are doing a fantastic job. One thing the W6 does not lack is brakes. It's time to show you how well they work. So the hydraulic is on the left side and that operates the rear brake. The mechanical front is on the right. Well, this is the brake test and it's kind of a, a smaller, you know, not a steep slope for the first 100 yards. And then I make a right turn and I'm gonna head down the same hill I did for the hill test. I do have them set to the, uh, the least severe level because I tried uh, upping the e-brake and it was just way too much. This is much more manageable especially for terrain like this where you don't really want super strong braking. Uh, it might throw you off the scooter. A little bit of squeaking, but they're smooth and they got plenty of power. I mean, I'm stopping almost completely on this steepest part right here, which is over 35% grade. So the brakes have taken a little bit of time getting used to, but uh, I'm starting to like them the more I ride this. The factory deset is set to the most severe braking, so I would definitely recommend popping into the settings and setting that to the, the less severe level. You'll enjoy braking a lot more. Okay, well, let me run you through the LCD screen and all the controls on the handlebars. First off, it does come with two keys and it is kind of hard to see with the sun right now, but that does display the voltage. Again, this has a finger throttle. This is one of my favorite throttle designs and display designs. Give you a look at the screen there. So it's a sunny day, sun is shining directly on that and I can see the screen just fine. Hit the power button to go through different readouts and then the mode button to switch through the gears, one, two, and three. And then to access the advanced settings that I have talked about throughout the review, just hold down the both buttons at the same time and there's your P menu. And that just goes, you know, P zero through nine. And then once you get the level that you want, you just hold that down again, and then you just change it through the power button. And when you're done, it'll just go back to the main screen within a couple seconds. And then just a heads up, P6, which most of you guys like cruise control, that is the cruise option. You can turn that on or off. Down below is the eco turbo button. So you push it in, that turns it on to eco. And then the single and dual motors. So push down. It's kind of hard to see when that's pushed down, but uh, there it is and that engages the single, or the dual rather, out is the single. And then the very bottom is a horn, which is very loud. On the left side are the lights, on and off. Well, I waited till dark to show you the lights because they are pretty awesome. I'm gonna flip them on here. <laughs> and look at the light show. It has just got lights all around this. Those two bars in the front are just crazy. Super bright headlights. 
I don't know if you can kind of tell, but that does change colors as it works its way up. And then uh, in the rear, and that's just pretty dang cool. I do like that. That changes colors and that matches the same color that's in the front. So that'll cycle through different colors, red, green, blue, white. Um, and it has a tail lights. They kind of just back up here and just give you an idea of how bright this is, which is just crazy. So you can move that, angle that down. On the left here, there's a turn signal. So that's the left turn. Switch it to right. And then there is no indication in the front, it's just the rear. That's gotta be one of the brightest lights I've ever seen on a scooter. The W6 has an IP54 waterproof rating, which means that it can stand splashing and dust. And I have ran it through a lot of dust over the last couple of days, still working just fine. It has a six month warranty and free shipping in the lower 48. Now, as far as customer service and spare parts, they've got a ton of spare pieces, tires, rotors. Uh, there's just a, a bunch of stuff that if anything goes out, uh, they can ship it to you. I did ask how long that takes to get to you in the US. Uh, they said about three to five days. They also said they have a 24 hour customer service response time. So if you shoot them an email, text or a column, uh, they'll respond to you within 24 hours, which is always good. And they have a warehouse in California. Well, overall, my favorite features with the W6 is just the, the suspension and how well it grips this sandy and rocky trail. It is, again, the most comfortable ride I've had on a scooter. I also like the power delivery. It's got really good power, but delivers it in a way that's much more comfortable than something like the Outstorm or some of these super high power scooters. And you kind of need that for this type of riding. You don't want something where you just hit the throttle and this jumps off on you. It'll leave you behind. I like the large deck, the tall stem. It was perfect for my 5'11 frame. They really took a lot of thought in, in designing this for comforts for off-road riding, which I really like. If you want to pick it up, I've got the link in the description. I've also got a link over to my website, electricrevolutionreviews.com. There you can find all of my reviews sort of by price and capability. So if you need help picking or finding the right scooter, definitely check that out. Hit that like button before you go and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.